So here's a new walk around of our 1948 Greyhound bus after a thousand days of ownership. We've got quite a lot done in that time and it seems to be a lot longer. So I just wanted to talk about a couple things I've done and give you an update. So one of the first things we had to do since the last walk around was get new tires all the way around. Last ones were pretty rotted out so safety wise that was the biggest thing to do. Beyond that, we worked on some cosmetic stuff. Recently got the roof painted. I did some blue trim paint up there and even went through all the Michigan lights with all new bulbs and sealed them up. You can see some of that in another video. But the main reason I did all that was for a solar project I'm working on, which you'll also find in my other videos. So one of the things I do as a hobby is vinyl graphics. So I copied these dogs from an old original sign that should have been on the side of this bus. And I got them up there and they turned out pretty good. One of the original owners had originally painted that dog up on there. You can see it here. And man, that was brutal to get off. It turns out they sanded the whole area down to prep it and painted it and that paint just stuck. Uh, the proportions just weren't quite right. And you can kind of see... There's a little overlap here, but I've got some future plans for that. So I did the best I could for now, and I just plan on polishing this all out one day, maybe when I retire. One of the other upgrades I've done since I've owned it is a complete new plumbing system. Uh, we put in an outdoor shower here. I've got two 30-gallon tanks, and a cable hookup all right here 120 volts coming off the uh, inverter and city water hookup as well uh, I'll have another video posted that explains more of the internals but I really didn't want to cut too much into this bus but the previous owners had a lot of different stuff here so I was able to reuse a lot of the holes that they had had. Um, I just had to open up the shower hole a little bit. They had some other plug stuff here. Um, so I just had to open this up, but this has been priceless. You know, when we stop at camp, we set up right out here with a table. We can do outdoor dishes. We've got hot water and cold water right here. So it's, uh, it's made it real nice for camping purposes. So I did paint the rims. He, everything was kind of a, a dull white before. Um, I just used Rust-Oleum oil-based paint and man, it, it turned out really good, really easy. One of the next projects is to restore some of these windows. So I've already pulled these two windows out here uh, the other side of these windows is my bathroom. I just converted the, the bathroom into a whole new setup. But these I just pulled them out, give them a good cleaning, good sanding, wipe the windows down real good. They, they come out pretty good. They're still, some of the glass is still fogged up, but the frames are in great condition. So I'm going to do that with the rest of them. Uh, probably during this COVID stay at home order. So that's the transmission hatch. I just got it opened up. I was in there the other day. No, I haven't buckled that back down yet. When I did the roof, I sanded it down and I brought my sanding down into this area. So that was about a month ago or so. So this metal was unprotected. So you can kind of see what the rain has done to it. Uh, just kind of an example of if you don't protect these things once they're sanded, this is what you're going to get. And once you sand them and start protecting them, that's your new hobby. So, the back end of the bus is in pretty good shape. The only thing I really had done back here, uh, again with the vinyl, is recreate some of the, the Greyhound sign here. I've got to get in. I'm going to retouch up all this black. I'm going to see if I can get all this stuff off here and then retouch this up. And I'm 
be real happy with that. But all the lights inside work. She glows when it hits the stop. And I was pretty fortunate that all my Michigan lights were in really good shape on this bus. So one of the things I did when I did the roof was I pulled these all apart and I re-chromed all the pieces that needed it. Uh, those trim rings there and then around up there. So. That's just a Henry's uh, cool white roofing. It's like a silicone rubberized roofing. It went on real easy. There's uh, three coats on the flats, four, sometimes five coats on the seams. Uh, but at least four on everything. So I haven't done too much on this side of the bus either. Uh, nothing different than the other side. Um, I'm gonna be working on this door here in the next few days. Uh, these hinges here, only one of them actually has a pin in it. This one here, I have the piece inside. I've gotta drill it out and measure for a new pin so that I can ream it and, and put a good pin in there. And once I get that one fixed, then I can jump to the next one and then to the next one. Um, the door does open. In an emergency, you could get yourself out of there, but without some help, you ain't getting it shut again. So uh, that's, that's definitely on the list of to-dos. I had a 4KW generator in this bay here. It was an Onan. Um, got it from the previous owner when I bought the bus. Claimed that it worked and it probably does. I've never tried to even start it. I just knew it was too much for what I was doing. So I got that out of there and I freed this bay up. Uh, but I do have future plans for that. Um, you'll see that in a, in a coming video. But the one thing I was really trying to do with my solar panels was make it so you couldn't see them from the ground. I just really didn't want to hurt the lines of this bus. It's so beautiful and you can put a couple flat panels up there and things change fast. So I bought some flexible panels and they're up there. Uh, you really can't see at any of the panel at all. From a distance you can see the poke through that I've installed for the wires to go through the roof. But other than that, you don't see any of that solar. So that was kind of important to me. And up front, since we purchased the bus, I had put the searchlight back on. Now that was a chore in itself. So I managed to find a period correct light. Um, not sure if it's exactly what would have been on here, but for the time frame, it's, it's period correct. It's got a little GM logo. But the hardest part to find was this. So, so many of these searchlights ended up on cars with a slanted pillar. So these mounting points, they all kind of had this angle to them. Um, so that was the really the hardest thing to find. What I ended up doing, I got lucky, I bought a box of parts on eBay and there must have been 300 of these little bits and pieces and handles and all kinds of stuff for just these searchlights. And in the mix, I found one for a flat panel. There was only one in that box, but I found one. And then I found the coordinating interior pieces too, so it trimmed out real nice inside. But I was able to purchase that box off of eBay, get the parts I need, turn around, resell it, and made a couple of bucks. So that was a win-win there. I've gotten both front windows now roll down, driver's side rolls down, and so does the passenger side window. Uh, those were challenges in themselves. Both had different issues, but I was able to get them solved. One of the other things I've done since I purchased was I sourced some of these original period correct turn signals. Now these are out there. They're glass lenses. Um, they're, they're there. They're just hard to get to that match. So that one's kind of orangish 
and this one's a little yellowish. So I'm still on the hunt for two colors that kind of match, but for now they're back to what they were. When I got the bus, it was just a, somebody had cut the metal arrow portion out and just left this outer trim ring and had an orange plastic lens in there. So, uh, I've painted the headlights yellow, um, more for the look. It doesn't do much in the way of light down the road, but I like the look. Um, I'm still on the hunt for one of these. I hear there is a guy who just started a website who's going to be making some of those parts, so I'll be in contact with him very soon. Um, my shoe cooler, this here, uh, boot cooler, shoe cooler, that still works great, and I tell you what, on a hot day, it's amazing. I love it. Um, part of the paint I did was that crown piece up there too, so I've got that piece done, and it's holding up well to the weather, so I'm going to do the same thing to the bow tie up here, and uh, hopefully this Michigan weather will... will be good to it. Um, I don't store this bus indoors. In fact, uh, it's never seen the inside of a barn as far as I understand. The previous owners had it for 20 years and it always sat outside um, here in Michigan. It is a Michigan bus. All the cities and my destination up there I can crank through. They're all Michigan short of, you know, just a couple like Chicago or Duluth, Minnesota. Uh, other than that, they're, they're upper peninsula to lower peninsula, so that's a lot of fun. But that's about it for the outside of the bus. I'll have another video shortly of the updates we've done on the inside. If you like these videos, please subscribe and check out my other videos. I'm trying to put together a nice little history of this bus, and I hope you enjoy it. Thank you.